You said before, quote, the only difference between unsuccessful people and successful people is that successful people do all the things unsuccessful people don't want to do. Elaborate on that. You betcha. When you're down and out, or you get a lot of failure in life, or you're fired by somebody, or you're rejected, well, you could say, I've been rejected. Oh, no, what am I going to do now? Or go back to what I learned selling encyclopedias, door to door. You knock on 50 doors, they're closing your face. You're just as enthusiastic on door number 51 as you were on the first 50 doors closing your face. In other words, you do what normal people wouldn't do. Successful people do all the things unsuccessful people don't want to do. You've also said before, quote, I'm able to do fewer things, the philosophy being pay attention to the vital few, ignore the trivial many. Explain that. You bet. It's one of the reasons I don't have email. I don't even turn a computer on because there's so much trivia that goes across it. If I had email, I'd be inundated. I'd be on that computer all day long because I just do too many things. So I found in life, you know, especially with all the companies I have and all the charities that I have, I'd be going nuts. So one learns how to hone in and pay attention to those things that are vital that I could contribute to. And things that I might con consider trivia to others are very important, but someone else could do better than me. But in my life, there's certain things I do really well. That's what I call pay attention to the vital few. What can I do really, really well? And consider everything else trivia if I can't do it really, really well and can find somebody else to do it or don't pay attention to it at all. In what ways did you learn to adapt as your companies were growing? Well, I'll give you an example of what I did was incorporated everything into my lifestyle. I think the best example I'd like to give was about 10 years ago. I'm in South Africa. I go there for a photo shoot. My wife and my son are with me for the photo shoot. I land in Johannesburg and I have a meeting with Nelson Mandela. We're involved together in one of our programs that we're eliminating landmines and getting rid of AIDS in Africa. And I worked with him very close. He was a friend of mine. My son was there. My wife was there. We went right into the bush and did a photo shoot in the bush with photographers. We brought in the orphans from my Food for Africa, some of the 8,000 we feed every single day, all the ages 1 to 12 years old. They became part of the photo shoot. So I got to see some of my kids there. Went and did a beauty show with Paul Mitchell in Johannesburg afterwards. Then from Johannesburg, I went out to Durban, and I did a Patron show there and another beauty show. And at that time, my son was just turning... I believe eight years old, maybe nine. We went south of Durban and at a birthday party for him at a friend's house in Africa. Half the kids didn't speak a word of English. They were all tribal children, right? Didn't speak any English whatsoever, but they all got along with slingshots and BB guns. So it was great. So we kind of incorporated everything into one. Get it all done at the same time. Family, friends, business, and philanthropy. What was the culture you were trying to create with your business? and? How difficult is it to maintain that as um, you have less of a presence at the actual office these days? I started a culture of fewer moving parts, mainly because I didn't have any choice. We didn't have any money. <laughs> so at Paul Mitchell, for the first six months, it was me doing everything and my partner, Paul, doing hair shows because he wasn't a businessman. After six months, I hired Shirley Wong. Surely we can afford to hire a person. It's you. You're not going to get a lot of money, but you're going to have 10 jobs because that's all we could do. So Shirley did all 10 jobs great. She was wonderful. How would you go about identifying the successful multitaskers in interviews? You never know in an interview what the end result is. My suggestion to people, whether it's in sports or business, is you could never, ever be faulted for who you hire. You could only be faulted for who you don't fire. So what I do when I interview people, and of course my staff does it now, is of course we'll look at a resume, but you can make up a resume in many areas. We look at how we feel about the energy of the person. We look at the person, we look them in the eye. We get a feeling for what they're really all about. And as they're talking to you, you try and look between the lines. You're like, what is this person really all about? We look for enthusiastic people, people we think have a heart, and people that we would think would be want to be part of our culture. How do you attract the best talent? Well, it's hard to attract the best talent for us at Paul Mitchell and Patron, mainly because nobody wants to leave. In 
the last 30, almost 38 years with Paul Mitchell, we're in over 100 countries. Our turnover has been less than 100 people. No one wants to leave. Why do you think that is? We take good care of our people. I don't have what you call middle management. I don't have supervisor watching people watching people. People have a responsibility and they own it. That's yours. You own it. This is your responsibility. The end result is up to you. Now, not everybody is ideal for a position. Sometimes we move them from one position to another to see if it works out. And you know, if it works out, it works out. Occasionally it doesn't work out and we have to let somebody go. How do you go about managing people? For me, it's quite easy to manage people because I have the best managers in the world. And the ones that are there managing people are people that are, know that we like to manage people with love and happiness and give them the opportunity. We don't want to bring someone in and reprimand them and make them feel bad. We want to bring somebody in behind closed doors, tell them what they did wrong, how to do it right. Sometimes they don't know how to do it right. And then before they leave, tell them something they do already really, really good that we appreciate. So by the time they leave, they know we really know what they do really well. This, yeah, maybe they could do a little bit better here. And it makes people feel good and part of the whole group. And we give them free lunch. There you go. Everybody gets free lunch.